I've been heads down coding except for the small bit where I went to Spain for an avalanche conference, which I thought was going to be a fun ski trip, but I came home being a father, but not of a kid to this weird looking chicken JPEG, which requires more maintenance than my NPM dependencies. Welcome to Voidlog Index 4. I'm happy to report that it's been over five months since I started working on Void Pet, aka the next Pokemon where you catch feelings, but not for people literal feelings like anger, sad, anxious, and my star pet named Gunter, who is a spite. Sorry to disappoint you, set M7X, sweepstakes, and sting bolt. Didn't happen this time around. The last update I gave, you could go to voidpet.com, claim a username, pick a starter, and build an emotional bond with them by cuddling, but that was about it. Now there's a new section to explore the void where you start as a scrap of void matter until you're taken to the institute, where you get to use our lovely avatar picker to create yourself a body. Everything cool you see on this page, like the background, hair, face, and other parts are SVGs hand-drawn by Linda using Figma, which we layer on top of each other to allow mix and matching of avatar parts. We have static 2D SVG backgrounds that you can navigate using arrow keys, which we went with to reduce the amount of work we had to do, but it's paid off big time. The more work your brain has to do to imagine the characters in real life, the more attached you feel to the game design. The like modern 3D graphics in a lot of games are really good and they've advanced really far, but they leave less for you to actually imagine what things look like in real life because you actually kind of see it. And there's something about the 2D that just has a nice effect to it. If you compare the OG Pokemon art, there's just something about the 2D pixelated Pokemon compared to the 3D models that just hits a little different and evokes a little different emotion than the 3D one does. Second, we were able to use the stretch property on SVGs to scale the background seamlessly from desktop to mobile, which saved a lot of time. We made VoidPet a website instead of an app because we wanted you to be able to play on any device, and also we didn't want to pay 10 to 30% in fees to app stores for in-app purchases. Completing quests is the main way to level and progress in the RPG, which you can do by going deeper into the void where you'll encounter named and wild void pets of all kinds. If you sit still, you can watch the void pets wander around the screen. The algorithm for this includes splitting the background into three zones to avoid too much funky looking overlap. In each zone, the pet will pick a random spot to move around to at a random speed with a random delay. Three factors go into the size of each pet. First is the evolution. A stage one sad will appear smaller than a stage five. Then each pet has a DNA trait for its size. Some lonelies are just bigger than others. We also take into account the position on the screen. The closer to the top of the screen, the further back we want the pet to appear, so we make it smaller to create depth. Battling is inspired by a mix of Pokemon, Divinity Original Sin, and Magic the Gathering. Internally, it's coded like a card game where each pet has a minimum of a 30 card deck and no more than four copies of the same card. Each pet draws four new cards at the beginning of the round and have three move points to spend creating a sequence. When the round starts, the pet with the higher excitement strikes first, and if you don't use all of your move points up, two points can roll over to the next round. The goal is for it to feel less complicated than a traditional card game, but to feel more strategic than Pokemon Combat by adding more choice and more move synergy. Battle animations can be anywhere between 5 to 10 frames drawn in Figma, which were originally SVGs, but they became too fat and CPU intensive when we added Glow, which made them look really cool, so we switched to PNG frames that I preload before the battle starts. The code to animate it is quite simple. It shows the first image, then waits 80 milliseconds, then shows the second image, waits 80 milliseconds and so on until all the images have been shown. If you find a pet you like the look of, you can try capturing it using a container. You can either try your luck by friending the pet or paying void matter, which is our currency, to force capture it. If you're unsuccessful at friending the pet the first time, you can try again with a new container, but the percent chance of it working goes down and the cost to force capture it increases. We made it so theoretically it's cheaper to try friending the pet, but there's a small chance the pet will eat the container and run away. So as a player, you have to decide if you want to pay a premium to guarantee the capture or take your chances with friending them. In the middle of catching a pet, you might change your mind and flee. If you do, the pet will disappear from the area to prevent someone from retrying the same capture over and over again. But one unexpected side effect of this was players started catching a pet and fleeing to clear the whole area quickly to respawn new pets in hopes of finding a rare vivid. 
Vivids are our version of Pokemon Shinies, but there's 16 different ones with each getting progressively harder to find. This way you can experience finding a Vivid pretty easily, but there's still rare Vivids for you to hunt. Instead of nerfing Vivid Hunter's strategies, we decided to see what would happen if we leaned into that behavior. So we added a new button called Scare Away, which just removes the pet from the area immediately to save them time. But there's a small chance the pet will steal some void matter. Another thing we notice players doing in the Void Pet Discord is keeping a bingo looking card to keep track of the Vivids they caught but it was annoying for them to keep up to date because it was an image they were just manually editing each time. So we decided to incorporate that into the game and automatically create bingo-like vivid cards for them. As the holy grail of startups told me to do, talk to your customers. You may have noticed the item on the top of my pet and around his neck, which also moves whenever the pet animates, which was a bit of a tricky setup, but now we have a nice system that works with any item. We create an editor where you pick a point on each species where the head and neck item goes on for the starting and ending frame of the animation. Then we make sure each item is the same size so it fits correctly. Now whenever we introduce a new pet, we just need to pick the head and neck point, but then every item automatically works on it. Including some of our paid items like the blue morpho butterfly or doge scarf. That's right This particular project actually has a monetization model so it can be sustainable Which in turn has allowed me to work on it full time which has resulted in a better game We are following the same system as Fortnite or League of Legends where you can play the game entirely for free And you're not at a disadvantage if you don't pay money But if you choose to pay money you can have your character looking extra swag Our main offering is a subscription called Giga which is designed to be a value pack for $3.99 a month or $39.99 a year where you get a whole bunch of stuff to make your void pet experience cool. Like my favorite perk where your void pet has an animated bounce that just endlessly happens when they're battling or wherever they are. We've gotten over 700 customers so far which is more than any other business that I or Linda has started and this is the main reason we've been able to devote so much time to Void Pet and build the game so quickly. If you've looked at our monthly active users chart, it looks like we've skyrocketed in users in April, going from 4,000 users in March to almost 50,000. But don't worry, I just forgot to track this stat till one of the last days in March. We have no plans to raise money. Between me and Linda, we have everything that we need to build out the game, and neither of us want to turn into managers by hiring employees. We'd rather bootstrap the business and make sure our incentives align with the players and our goal is to make a really fun game rather than trying to build the biggest business and scale it to the moon. The next steps are to build out more quests, zones, pets, and we'll be experimenting with some light multiplayer features. Guilds are the start of that, but currently their only functionality is to practice battles with other members of your guild. We're careful about what multiplayer features we roll out because we want to be kid friendly, but also not have to do content moderation, which restricts a lot of our options. For example, to even be invited to a guild, you need to give the guild leader or one of the officers your friend tag instead of just your username to make the system opt in and avoid spammers going around and sending requests to every username they can think of. Two likely features that we're going to add are auction houses where you can buy and sell items and a PVP area of some kind where you can rank up. There you have it. That is close to everything that we've built in Void Pet in the past three months. Stay tuned for future Void logs because now that I finally like the thing that I'm working on, this is just the beginning of the journey of what is to come.